Welcome! We are live! Oh no, At, I'm seeing simulator. Turkey Lips again. No, you're not. I, I, I am. It like, just switched over. The Turkey again? Yeah, yep, as soon as you went live. Too. That doesn't... Um, I'm seeing us live. Oh, I just saw it go to Turkey too. Okay. Oh, that's super weird, everybody. We got some... We got some Twitch problems. Actually, here it is. Uh, I see us going live right now. We... Alright, I just refreshed it. Refreshing it seems to have made it work. My, my TTS, for some reason, not where it's supposed to be. Seconds. <laughs> That's a bizarre bug. So if someone's already on your stream, they need to refresh the whole page? Yeah, I don't... I, I guess, man. I, oh, I know, right? That's really weird. All right, and then... And I don't uh, like it. You know what? Give me... Friends. Helio Tripe? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Not on purpose. <laughs> that's what it is, I guess. Uh, that shouldn't be like that. Um, so, let me... Cut off this for two seconds so I can win this game. Not show everybody the password. Show it. Uh... All right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a week and a half. Well, I guess two full weeks, right? Yeah, two weeks. Um, it's the uh, the last time we played. So uh, welcome back. Uh, we are uh. Game master and players of Heliotrope Cathedral, a mini D and D campaign, smaller D and D campaign, and uh, we need somebody who is not me to do a uh, a little recap and some information. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so this is our third session in the World of Madness, or as we call it now, the Hurt Zone. Uh, 
world of madness is i believe not counting your home world the third of the worlds in the multiverse that we have visited on the course of this little adventure and in this world everything is ruined um everything is a little bit off everything is a little bit um unnerving by its very existence some really important things about this world um there are a number of uh, creatures skittering everywhere which seem uh, completely unnatural foreign to all of your senses and yet seem very difficult to investigate there is a little girl that you found um who lives down in the sewer slash catacombs area beneath the well which is uh as you may know your anchor point for traveling between worlds um uh, also in these catacombs there is a an amphitheater with uh these tongues of blue flame occasionally which appear as uh souls of the lost to those in the amphitheater which have some some mind affecting powers um also in this world are the ruins of what you now know to be fairweather pharmaceuticals this world's iteration of the um fairweather building sometimes mansion sometimes prison now seemingly pharmaceutical uh, operation uh and in this world you encountered uh, harkwell the manservant from the fairweather family uh from world of constellations as i recall as well as a uh 80 foot monstrous tree which you now know to be um this world's incarnate form of bright home the mage slash aficionado of ascension to godhood um the foil to uh our god to be jonas um in this world you attempted to do what you've done every world so far which is survive and then leave hopefully to find your way back home or to someplace better than this and in this world for the very first time the compass which transports you between worlds doesn't work you're not sure why uh, and as the compass approaches this massive tree creature, uh, it works less and less well. It begins to shout, uh, nothing's at you. It, it, it's talking crazy. It's giving you explicit error codes. It, it simply won't work. Um, and so you approach this tree uh, near the end of last session with this little girl in tow. Um, this little girl uh, at the base of the catacombs who was collecting items that are purple from the rub uh, the rubbish and the wreckage here and arranging it into pleasing shapes most notably that of a flower uh she seems to think that wherever is the place she wants to go that you have come from there uh due in no small part to our resident thief davros um supplying a little piece of purple amethyst to this little girl convincing her that wherever this purple land is uh, he he's from there um she's following you um, hand in hand, waiting for you to lead her to to this promised place. And um, as you approach this tree and Harkwell, you find that Harkwell is attempting to cast some kind of spell. He's involved very profoundly in those tongues of blue flame we had mentioned before. And all around this tree, uh, marked in blue here on the screen, uh, is more blue flame. So he is channeling that blue flame to some end. Uh, within the tongues of flame, you can see different places, different locations, and he is seemingly trying to find something. Uh, we learn that uh, through Jonas's conversation with him that he is looking for the cathedral, as he calls it. Uh, Jonas, in a little bit of trickery, um, outright lies and some in, some somewhat truthful invocation of deific power, convinces Harkwell that he is an agent of the cathedral and not only has come from there, but can take him to it. Harkwell uh, believes you completely. Uh, immediately converts to your side and will follow you to the ends of the earth. Unfortunately, uh, this tree revealing herself to be Brightholm does not believe you, which is true, which, which is uh, fair because you are explicitly lying. You have no idea what he's talking about. And uh, she begins to attack you. The blue flame around her grows in strength and uh, potency, and uh, all around her body, uh, eyeballs begin to... Uh, Pour, uh, pop out of the bark. The bark splits open to reveal uh, a toothed maw, at the center of which is an eyeball. Um, there's 11 of them total. Uh, and at the very top, uh, the bark splits back to reveal a very human face. Uh, at the very end of the session, 
uh, Jonas had convinced Brightholm to actually turn against his old friend completely, and he has shoved his hands into the flame at the base of the tree and pulled some of it out as if to throw it away, as if to to remove some of this this magic from her. He does so. It scatters around the arena, uh, as shown by the four tokens around the tree, the four little purple swirly tokens. Uh, Franz, I don't know if we can get a, a closer zoom in on specifically the, the battleground area. Uh, this angle is fine, but the, to, to square in a little bit closer on it. Um, and each of those is a window to a different world. I think, let me double check, none of them are worlds you've been to. Uh, two of them are portals to, or windows to the world of songs. One is a window to the world of cathedrals, and one is a window to the world of storms. And we left right as those windows were opened. And I believe that was... Did we end the round? I think we did. I hope we did. I think we, we, I think we were turned in the, the middle of the round. Of the round. I'm sorry? We, and I, th I think we were in the middle of the round, but I thought uh, two of the windows were song. We're... I just I just watched the... Yeah, that's what I said. Two song, one cathedral, one storms. Oh, I only I thought there was three. Okay. Hmm, Bright home may need to go, unless uh, you skipped her for a reason. Oh, Bright then uh, whatever the green... Green is uh, Davros. Uh, oh, yeah, Davros, that's right. Kurt wanted to uh, delay to the end right. of the round. And then... Frats, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, uh, Jonas had just gone, or did you go, Jonas, or did you let Harkwell take his turn? Harkwell, and then had you were going to take the, yours. The and, portals, yeah. Yeah, so you haven't gone yet. I guess. Do Do you remember going last time? No, I think you ended on the portals. Okay, so we begin uh, this session and the middle of this fight with um, Jonas, played by. Uh, our host Frat Scat. Um, about to take his turn after seeing these portals open to these these other worlds. <clears throat> I forgot to load something up. Sure. <coughs> uh because I don't know what my character can do. <laughs> Everything. I mean I'm probably just gonna sling some more bolts at him. At, you like at Bright Home? You literal spineless tree mm. guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that and she dies immediately upon hearing it. I mean, that I am a good bard. You're a great bard. I did I did I did convince this guy that I know what the could be. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like you convinced seventy three people that you were God. Uh no, that I was going to be a god and they would, I'm sorry. And they Correct. would be saved in my in yes. my light. Right, right, right. Of course. Uh let's not confuse. Yeah, that would be terrible. Almost as terrible as 73 murders. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look here. Um, ooh, wait, 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 wait. Your hand point. Um, care about that. Uh, do I notice do I notice that one of the um, what is playing in the back I don't know in in on your computer hold on two seconds here
Gordon That's okay. Um, I figured it out. So, um, can I see one of the? Do I recognize? You say it's World of Cathedrals, but is there something recognizable about it that would be cathedral based? For me, not knowing those worlds. Um. I mean, it. it, it let me see where you are. You are. Here, Cathedrals is the one that I have picked up right here. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you turn to look at it. Uh, I, it, I mean, it, the window is to a vast cathedral. It is very clearly a, a, a giant cathedral. Certainly any world could have one, uh, and you don't know what the list of worlds are, but it is certainly a cathedral. <clears throat> okay. So, uh... <clears throat> Jonas... Jonas uses his turn to drop to his knees. Mm hmm And point at the... How did you? How do? We, how was this described? It's the tongue of flame that looks in the other world. Th these four are uh, much bigger. They're maybe uh, three feet by six feet, um, and yeah, they are tongues of flame that flicker, and in the flickering, show windows to a, another place, another object, another thing. In many ways, another feeling. Uh, this window feels has an air of reverence to it. Has an air of um, sanctity and quiet to it um and visibly shows though flickering an image of a, a vast cathedral a golden cathedral to be specific so <clears throat> damn i wish i could do something with specifically with the girl but i guess It'll be okay if it's on um, Davros' turn. So uh, Jonas uh, falls to his knee in response to seeing, recognizing anything remotely close to a cathedral. Yeah, it's really coming out perfect for him. <laughs> and uh, go and I guess encourages Harkwell in in the sense of. Um, you know, maybe I think he would say something like, um, how is it possible? How can I see the, the cathedral from from this this wherever we are? Um, and so uh, <clears throat> I don't know if Harkwell hears me or understands what I'm what I'm referring to, but uh, I'm clearly looking at the, the portal that. Uh, shows the world of cathedrals and uh and i go it's there the cathedral we must dispatch uh this imposter referring and, to brightholm yes and go find the real brightholm at the cathedral it's an interesting take do you also do anything or do you just use your turn to talk Nope, just the talk. Okay. Um, what's your intent here? That we, that you guys like book it, that you bail. You want to? No, I want to kill her. And I want him to kill Brightholm. I want to almost convince Harkwell through through this dialogue that I'm I'm furthering the lie, if possible, to. Imagine the idea that this bright home is not the actual bright home, and that the real bright home will meet us at the cathedral. Interesting. Okay. Um, I don't plan on like rolling anything or like like intently, you know, forcing. In the middle of this action, I'm not trying to. I'm just like laying groundwork for a bigger lie. Okay. Okay. Um, that's fine. Noted. 
uh, and um, we will go to Davros. Davros, you are at the foot of this vast tree beast, um, and you uh, do you have the short sword? Is that embedded in the bark? I think did, did you? End it's up embedded. It yeah. No, think. because I used the token to pull it. Out. Oh, you used. Tree. Oh, you did. Okay. Ah. Okay. Cool. So you have it. Um, yeah. And you delayed your turn, so we reach now uh, your turn. What do you do? Um, the one, um, the the portal that opened immediately to my flank. What what uh, what is what do I see? Sure. Um, so that is the portal to. Give me one second. I believe it is songs. Yes, the world of songs. So, as you turn, you actually can't help but turn to it. It's really entrancing, and you hear audibly. A, a real song pour forth from it. Um, it is upbeat, uh, not quite jaunty. It's celebratory. Um, it's triumphant. It's victorious. Uh, it's being played on brass and uh, woodwinds, and you hear the clanging of bright drums behind it. Um, within it, you see a parade, not the same parade that left, but uh, wounded, Certainly, um, not all who who left on this journey have come back, but nonetheless, they've come back victorious. Uh, and the city greets them thusly. Um, it is a, a spectacle. There are fireworks, uh, perhaps magical, perhaps alchemical. Um, great beasts circle the air, summoned by or, or in some way leashed and controlled by the wizards within this parade. Um, it's a, a glorious spectacle, and you feel emboldened and empowered uh, just by being next to it. Now, there's no immediate effect in your character from where you're standing, but you do feel uh, magnificent just as an emotion, just by being near it. I am going to use... we get The new way we do actions, we have three, basically, right? Per Cor correct. And each of them can be anything. Okay, I'm going to disengage from uh, the tree, mm -hmm. and I am going to step over to the blue flame of with the with the songs, and I'm going to reach up and touch it. Okay, uh, so like straight up, like in its circle, or or no, just adjacent. Like you're like, are you adjacent like, all the way in, or just your hand inside? Just my hand. Okay, um, as you reach your hand inside, you feel lighter. You feel this like. Um, Almost like you're buzzed, like you feel that you're 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 two shots in. All of a sudden, the world is a little bit stranger, um, and the song gets much louder. Now it's as if you're in, almost you're maybe you're in the city, but you're behind a closed door, listening to this this these trumpets in this parade. Um, just by reaching in it from where you're standing, um, you have advantage on your next roll. Just FYI. Uh, but you do know you're not fully. There's, there's actually. Roll me a will save. I'm going to say that you are almost compelled to enter the same square by how magnificent and how powerful it makes you feel. So roll me a DC 12 uh, charisma save. Okay. All right. Roll to 14. You make it. Um, you are not compelled to enter. You, of course, still may. You have free will, but you resist that urge to do so without thinking. Um, so that's your first action. What's your second? Uh, that was my second, right? Because I used a disengage so, I could, so the tree wouldn't get oh, in. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know what that was in, in rogue terms in 5e. So that's fine. So then. Well, that's just action? general combat terms in 5e. Disengage is an action. Okay. And, you, and the, um, the, the antagonist just doesn't get an AOL, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, all right. So what's your third action? Um, my third action will be... Hmm. My third action is going to be... I'm going to pass on my third action because I don't know what's going to happen with um, uh, 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 Harkwell. Okay. Um, so we, we're going to go to the top of the round. 
Okay. So, as I mentioned, when Harkwell pulled out these four pieces of flame, and again, the flame at the base of the tree dimmed noticeably, and she screamed out in pain. It's very clear this is hurting her. Um, whatever these things may be. And she digs both of her hands into the ground as if she is trying to physically pull it up. And all of you feel beneath you are rumbling. And you can see the roots begin to, the, the earth is moving like, um, have you guys ever stepped on a lawn that has a, um, like a busted septic tank beneath it? And like the actual earth is almost like you're walking on a waterbed. Like on a waterbed? Yeah, it's like that. It actually almost throws you off your feet. Everybody roll me a DC 10 reflex save, please. So I'm still grappled, like halfway up. Oh, then you're fine. You don't. You don't. Anyone who's on the ground has to roll this. What? What do I have advantage on again? Your next roll. So this. Much better. Yeah. Oh 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 oh. I was That's wondering. I was like, I sure hope he doesn't think that that D ten is his roll. Oh, oh, that was I saw that. I saw that, Frats. Uh, that I'm pretty was sure it hit a 20 and, he, and then and then it did that. It, it was into a four. It went 14 and then rolled over a four. And this makes sense. You're already on your knees. Uh, you are knocked prone. It takes you one action to get back up when it's your turn. FYI. Um, uh, Davros, you uh, nimbly sort of sidestep it. And as you sidestep, you see beneath your feet that these roots are um, rippling throughout the ground. And they are lunging in four very specific directions. They are lunging for the four portals. Um, it gets to, I'll say, on on one turn, it gets to where you see the ground underneath them. Um, the roots start to, like, as if from beneath, saw out that plot of land to bring it to her. So all four of them are now surrounded by uh, these rooted, sharp-rooted tendrils uh, that are carving out the earth. But she hasn't like fully i guess we could call it grappling she hasn't grabbed them or grappled them yet and they haven't moved from their position this round um pretty transparently i can it's easy for you to at a glance know that within one more turn she'll have it so her next her next turn she will have done accomplished her thing brought these things to her um unless you do something of course to stop her uh in addition um everybody roll me a uh wisdom save everyone who actually um Everyone roll me wisdom save. Um, Verk, roll it with disadvantage. Uh, if you, you could roll for Harkwell as well. Is it a wisdom save? I got a five. Okay. Wisdom. I have an 11. Wisdom. Rick, you fail. I have a 19 for myself. You want me to roll for a heartball? Yes, please. 19 for Jonas. Damn, Harkwell, Not whatever. 20. Okay. You two are unaffected by this. So again, the eyes look at you, and we're, no matter what you're looking at, you feel a pull. your eyes lock with one of the eyeballs on her body. Uh, uh, you have this advantage, Verk, because you are so close, you can't butt stare. Um, and it pierces into your very soul, uh, and you feel your uh, your conviction. This begins to erode. Your sense of self begins to erode. Um, your command over your nervous system begins to erode a little. Um, everyone has disadvantage on their next roll. Furthermore, everybody takes. Oof, I'm sorry. Uh, nine psychic damage, except for um, uh, Fratzen. And so we don't have disadvantage either, right? Correct. Nothing happens to you. Um, yeah, these are these are quite lethal. Uh, Does anything happen when uh, Vigor runs out? Besides just going into wounds? No, just you go into wounds. Um, it is. Oh, we did not roll initiative. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna. I already I had you wanted go, to roll that in between so... rounds. Yeah. 
I know. I, I'm not even. I shouldn't also be introducing house rules. I don't know mid session, but that's fine. Let's just go with this current setup for now. Um, so we've got uh, Verk. Verk, it's your turn. Oh, and right. I apologize. She is down to uh, ten working eyeballs because you punched one of them and the, the teeth closed over it, uh, and it. She was very clearly wounded. You had your hand is covered in like gross eyeball slime. Certain you. You uh. You fuck off. The one within arms. Uh, there are, are two more you're standing right now. All right. I am going to. Let's see here. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to. Reckless attack. Okay. Um, so that'll give me an advantage, and... Uh, you have disadvantage on your next roll, so that cancels out. So, so you it cancels. roll normally. Roll, okay. Um, so this will be for the first one. Nice. 20 to hit. Okay, hits. And... Let's see here. Five. Uh, eight damage. Okay. Um, and you're and you're attacking again. Is it still? Well, that I'll describe. I'll, I'll, how how are you attacking? Is your plan of attack to hit one then the other immediately, or you're attacking one waiting to see if it is? Yeah, I'm gonna what happens, and, then, and then perhaps attack it again. Okay. Yeah. So you hit it for eight. Um, that's actually enough. Uh, you just you're just punching it, right? Yep. Yeah. You just punch it. You then you feel that squish of the eyeball, and once again you're gonna have to roll me reflex because the jaws attempt to close in on your hand. All right. So I do have danger sense advantage okay. on deck saves that affects that you can see. Sure. So I'm assuming I can see this. You now that you know it's coming because it happened last yeah. time. Um. Oh. Seven oh, my friend. plus it's eight. Yep. So, you <laughs> feel the squish. She screams out again. I count her is down to uh, to nine. Nine. Um. And uh, here, let's do. I'll do a little uh. Two, three, four, five, seven. How many eyeballs you got? Yeah, I'll do a little eyeball eyeball tracker at the top of this thing here. Um, a nice little visual aid here. Um, but the jaws clamp around your hand, uh, dealing mm -hmm. you, my friend. Five damage. What um, type? Um, what would teeth be? I guess piercing. Would it be right? piercing? Piercing. Yeah. Yeah. So then I would have um, resistance on that. Uh, which is what again? Half. Half. Okay. Uh, we're gonna half round up. So three. Three. Okay. Um, so you take three damage, but more importantly, the jaws do not open back up. Your hand is now locked in this vice. Um. What do you do on your next action? You can oh, and you can feel it to be to be uh, very clear. You can feel it biting through. It is trying to bite your hand off. I'll go ahead and uh, I guess it would be athletics to to kind of force the jaws open. Well, you don't want to rip the hand out because well, it will just like <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> I imagine you're going to try to like for force the jaws open try with the other hand or something. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Little yeah. one hand. Ver yeah, right. We're, we might be calling a one hand work by the end of this uh, fight. Uh, roll me athletics, my friend. Alrighty. Uh, oh! oh! Oh no! 
Oh no. Uh, okay. So as you attempt to do it, um, you like kind of lean and you slip, you lose your footing, um, causing you to, um, fall down. You're now hanging by the hand. That's bit putting more pressure on the hand. You're going to take an additional, uh, four. So half, so two, two damage. Um, and I'm going to add a separate damage tracker to your hand. I'm going to say when you reach 15 points of damage, um, your hand is bitten off for good. Okay. So we're currently at uh, five, I believe, total, right? I just uh, did two, and you had to five, dealt yeah. three? Okay. Yep. All right, what's your third action? Uh... Oh, and, and not only you can feel the teeth, it, it's moving like gums, like it's gnawing. It's it's working its way into your flesh. I figured the uh, the athletics to pull my hand out would have been my third. Uh, that's... Because I did two attacks. Or no, I did... Was yeah. that my first? No, you attacked once. Oh, okay. Atta you attacked once. The whole Remember, you were like, I want to wait and see what happens? Yeah. You attacked once. Okay. I, I made you make a reflex save. That wasn't an action. Second yeah, yeah. action was to try to get out. So yeah, you have a third action. All right, well, can I uh, regain my footing and try again? Yes, but you are at disadvantage because you have lost your footing. So if you're trying to do both, regain your footing, like put your feet on this firmly uh, mm -hmm. and then pull your hand out. Actually, I'm going to say you could do two or things. Or would it just be... No, yeah, I'll say you can, you, okay. can roll, you can roll completely normally um, a DC 10 athletics to regain your footing. Or you can roll a DC... It's already been... F you can roll a DC 13 athletics at disadvantage to pull your hand out, right? So if you wait a little bit and you just regain your footing, it's easier to regain your footing this turn and try to pull it next turn. Yep. You're welcome to accelerate the process, but you will have disadvantage. No, I'm just going to regain my footing. Okay. All right. So DC 10 athletics rolled normally. Oh, there's my 10. I know I'm not negative. Uh, okay. 15. So, so you, you just like grit your teeth, brace both your feet against the bark of this monstrous tree. Arboreus uh, Brightholm, I believe it was, uh, Fratz, I believe you named her. Yeah, something like um, that. And uh, you no longer have disadvantage on your next athletics roll, but you're in a pretty sorry state. Um, you... <laughs> You hear Verk cry out. Do you say anything? Do, does um because I don't know that Joe I don't know that uh, Davros can quite tell. Yeah, Davros, you can tell what's going on. You can tell that he was hanging by his hand. And Jonas, you see this as well. I don't know if you give a shit. Um I'll just looks like holler out the on. damn tree bit me. Um, which is appropriate because you said that your bite was worse than its bark, and it turns out that its bark <laughs> also has bite. Ooh. Much like the root beer. Uh that leads us to uh Jonas, it's your turn. Burke, how's it hanging, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm back standing again, so. Yeah. Um, like three seconds too late on that. <laughs> <laughs> See what I have in my arsenal. Are there any? Uh, are there any? Um, if I were to run up to the arboreous Brightholm, are there any eye socket holes that are within uh, the uh, melee slash? Um, uh, what do I have? A cane sword uh, distance. There's one. Yeah. Okay. But like, if if I were to get to like next to yeah, uh huh. Hark Harkwell, I There's guess. There's one. Okay. Yeah. Um, not that I'm doing that yet. I just sure. Um, Uh, 
Um, yeah, let's run up to Bright Home and I'll take a one of the maws. Okay, so that's <clears throat> two actions. Um, go ahead and roll me to hit. Come on, really? Just right click and click. Right the click button. it. Right click it and rapid click the roll button. Right oh, click the. There you go. That's way cooler. Cool. Okay, uh, miss my friend. Aha! Glances off the bark. You have another uh, action though. Do with what yeah. you will. Yeah. Um. So the next action is going to be. Um, trying to do that again. All right. Who would have would have guessed? Oh! Oh, oh my! I saw that nat twenty. Son of a bitch. Yeah, it turned into an eight. What's yeah, the was, total on that? It was an eight. Um. I mean, I, what was what would be my I don't think I have any modifiers, right? Uh, your strength. Yeah, just a zero. And your proficiency, right? Yeah. I don't know. I you you're the one who has your character sheet. I'm looking at it, and I don't know what proficiency is on my weapon. Proficiency is a bonus that applies to like most of your rolls. Plus two, right? Now. Plus two, what? If Plus you have proficiency, roll, if you have proficiency in a way. Yeah. I have no idea what either of you just said. Do you, what is your proficiency score? Like it's a stat, it should be on your the front page of your character sheet. I'm looking at the same character sheet that we were using out of roll 20. Uh-huh. I under under core stats, so the front page. Uh-huh. And then under level and experience. It should have a two under proficiency bonus. I okay, yeah, I do see that. So I have a two. Okay, okay. And then what's your strength? Uh, zero. Okay, so a total of a ten. Yeah, uh, which, which unfortunately misses. That's fine. Okay. So two swings, two misses. Do you um, say anything to Harkwell? <clears throat> we must end this quickly to move on to the cathedral. Um, he nods grimly, um, and on his turn, he reaches into this flame. You see now his hands are not burning, uh, but they are starting to wither and, uh, blacken. Uh, David just begin to die as he, as he puts his hands in there. Um, he is going to roll himself a will save. Ah, terrible. Um, he reaches into there. He pulls out but a single uh, tongue of flame, um, and he holds it in his both of his hands as if it is threatening to consume him. Brightholm screams out. She seems visibly weaker. Um, but uh, um, Harkwell is, loses the rest of his turn uh, as, he, as he attempts to not have whatever's happening to him spread over his whole body from this tongue of flame. Um, so we know that it is keenly dangerous to, to handle if you don't know what you're doing. Um, if anyone was thinking about it, you're welcome to try. Uh, you talk about the flame next, that the flame that the blue. I'm sorry, the flame that uh, Davros already put his hand into. The flame that Davros put his hand into is a is a window to another world. The flame that is currently attached to Brightholm. Right, the, is the is little dots around, him. right? Right, he he didn't... No, those are raindrops. Oh. The blue circle around her is the flame that's around oh, her. Oh, right, 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 right. He reached into that, and it's still attached to her, right? He didn't free it from her. He yeah. failed, and so it's consuming him. The four around were freed from her, and they have become their own thing. And as we learned last round, they are safe to touch, although you certainly get affected in some way. Like, he's being affected by songs. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the but the but 
you're saying Harkwell was trying to remove the blue flame from Brightholm? Do the same thing he did last turn. He's trying to pull flame out of her and throw it away. Got it. Right? Got it. It just didn't work. Got it. Um, I believe we are at the bottom of the round, uh, Davros. Um, with wounds and vigor, the way death works is if you get to zero wounds, you are dead dead. Correct. Uh, you get one more saving throw, but yes, you're, you get, make a fortitude save, and then if that fails, you're dead. Okay. How big are the windows? How big are the what? The windows. Um, about three, three by six, so you could certainly climb in if you wanted to. Davros is climbing in the window. Okay. Uh, Davros, you climb into the window, um, and we hear, or you guys just see him completely vanish from view. Uh, the song crashes into you and is now bright and loud. Um, and you find yourself in this uh, brightly lit city. Um, think of um, late period Roman architecture. So especially uh, almost gaudy, uh, brilliant displays of wealth, gold and silver everywhere, fine silks, purples and reds. Uh, you're on these uh, terracotta tiles of the roof of this building, watching the parade go by. You feel absolutely glorious. You feel invigorated. You're here as a citizen of this city, and this parade is as much for the warriors as it is for you. And you are strengthened by it. There is one thing you notice. There is a woman riding on a brilliant black stallion at the very head of this um a procession you look down and recognize immediately it is bright home she is bearing a banner uh behind her on her horse and you notice that everyone else in the um uh procession is bearing a banner with that same uh signature the same no, sorry not signature the same um symbol um and given that for this moment you feel you're, you're you're of this world you're from here you know inherently it is bright holmes symbol and within another second you realize that she has transcended you're looking at a god riding home triumphant what is your second action um, when I look behind me, is there a window back or am I yes. just, this is. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, you see that you are almost stretched out as if you're, the image of you is tethered to this window. Like you're, you've, you've, um, pushed through like a, a thin wall of silly putty. Does that make sense? Like you're, you're, you're not actually in this world. You simply feel like it. You're still very much tethered to this, this blue window. Okay. What is this window? Um, that is cathedrals. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, cathedrals is the below and below it. That is, uh, storms can i make it back out the window and over into the storms window? uh well how far is it one five ten or five ten fifteen twenty twenty five yeah you sure can so well hold on so you leave uh <laughs> you, you can put yourself there you can put yourself there but so you leave songs you pull back and you feel that rush the invigoration stays <coughs> with you um, you you still feel absolutely triumphant. Um, you have advantage on your next. Two rolls. Um, and you may add your charisma modifier to any damage rolls uh, for which you have advantage. All right. Um, you you in fact you fucking sail you don't run to storms you feel like you are just floating through it uh, you make a beeline for it there's no hesitation you leap right in and as you leap in um you have that same effect you're kind of like you push through your acceleration slows and you hear the crashing all around you you are in um what looks like the very same town and now you recognize the color of the buildings is a little more familiar uh the color of the sky reminds you uh takes you back just 
three, four days ago to the destruction that you witnessed, the hellscape that erupted from the ground. And you realize that the city you saw in songs and the city you see now are, in fact, your home city. The city where in uh, Fairweather Prison was, the city where in your, your guild was, the city where in you were arrested and led to this chain of events. Um, however, there are um, arcs of lightning everywhere. Um, you are witnessing a city under siege. Um, in addition to the literal storm above uh, and the, the thunder crashing, there are hailstones everywhere. Uh, there is a vast battle raging outside the gates of the city. At a glance, you can tell, and more importantly, you just intuit, you know that this city has been under siege for years unending. This is a world under siege. Um, they have survived this one. Perhaps they will survive the next. Um, and after that, and after that, and after that, until the end of time, they will continue to fight. Um, the forces at the outside, uh, you see their banner clear. Uh, one of them raises it high above the city walls before they are struck down by a bolt of fire that pierces them right through the chest, like burns a hole clean through. You see their, their rib cage gruesomely uh, uh, surround the cavity where their heart once was, and the banner falls. That banner is bearing Brightholm symbol as her forces attack this city. You feel... Um, invigorated but in a very different way than songs you feel a bloodlust upon you you feel the the command of the wreckage um you feel this thirst for blood um do you remain here do you uh, have any other questions about what you're seeing or and and i believe yeah that's you have, you still have an action left what do you do for your third action um <clears throat> I don't think I have any questions, <clears throat> but I want to now make my way into the into the cathedrals. Oh, you're just gonna fucking hop, okay? Yep. All right, so you make your way. I believe, yeah, I think you still have. It's what five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Yeah. Um, so you leap from it and you see Jonas specifically, you see as he leaps from songs, he is, he has a, he has a gleaming smile. He is triumphant as he leaps from storms, his teeth are grit in a grimace. Uh, he is no less determined, but he is far bloodier than he was. Um, as you, uh, leave storms, um, you get a, uh, you have a, a damage aura on you, so this is going to stack in, in a pretty terrible way. Um, you're going to add a D6, uh, to all of your damage rolls. Um, uh, this stacks with the charisma modifier you're adding to it. Um, actually, hold on, let me think of the numbers real quick. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, you're going to add a D6 to all your damage rolls. Um, however, um, you are going to uh, inflict half of the damage that you do upon the closest target. So you're going to kind of do splash damage almost. It doesn't matter gotcha. who that target is. Um, and you, you leap into um, cathedrals. The first thing you hear is the tolling of a vast bell. And you look up, and I believe by now you can predict this with, with clarity. You're standing at the base of this bright, gleaming, golden cathedral. At the very top of it, etched into the stone and filled in with uh, with gleaming silver, is the uh, deific symbol of Brightholm. God of you don't know what, but once again, God of this world. However, this is peaceful. Uh, those who are here have gathered for a service. They are singing songs in her name. Though you don't speak the language of this particular world, uh, and though, once again, of course, you recognize it as being your hometown, the town uh, in which Fairweather Prison, Manor, and perhaps Pharmaceuticals once was, uh, you know the context. They are worshipping her serenely as and asking for her blessings. She is a kind and caring god to these people. She gives them all that they ask for, and all the shacks in return is undying servitude. Um, I will not give you your effect yet, because you have to end your round there. You're out of actions. Uh, but you are feeling... You're four shots deep. You start to feel yourself. You're coming undone. You're holding a hell of a lot of power in yourself right now, and you know it. I don't... I don't want to make you roll a will save or anything like that, but I, I don't know that you care that much. You're, you're almost drunk on it. It's a lot to take in, and so far it's all good. 
Um, you, you're you're too drunk to know quite how drunk you are. You think you maybe have a couple more drinks in you, and maybe you only have one. Uh, but that is the end of the round. Top of the round, we get to Brightholm. Hold on. You s- What's up? Are we having the girl do anything? It's entirely up to you guys. And it, it's really up to Jonas, because uh, Davros is in a portal. He Even if he had an idea, he can't tell you what it is. Oh, <clears throat> uh, don't make it up to Jonas. You, I, I think it is. <laughs> well, we so... know that she can float uh, on her prehensile hair and seems pretty nimble in it. That hair seems like as agile as any pair of hands you've ever seen. Um... That's, I think, all you know about her that might affect this, but you're welcome to think of anything you'd like. Hair whip the eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it would do any damage, but it would annoy the hell out of her. You, know, you ever get an eyelash in your eyeball? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, annoy, that, annoy the shit out of her. <gasps> um, Just do it, man. Make a play. I'll... How would do? How to do to say? How to do, well the 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 biggest problem being the the language barrier <laughs> to this girl, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um. So there, could I somehow figure out a way to um encourage her to help her? Maybe not be completely offensive, but support Verk in some sort of way as he as he has cured his footing, but still caught in the uh, yeah. In this mall. I, I mean, so just just think about it. Just like close your eyes and imagine yourself in this world. There's someone who doesn't speak your language. How would you get them to help somebody whose hand is stuck in a tree? I can think of a pretty clear like you. Right. Oh, I'm on the webcam, right? So you guys can't see me. I yeah. don't have that up all the time, right? So so you have your hand, put your hand out like this. You're you're grabbing your wrist with your other hand and you're trying to pull it back and you're miming this like, I, I can't pull it back. Yeah. And then you point at Verk, who is clearly doing that. That's, a I think, a totally clear, easy to understand, like, and then he's stuck, right? Which, from her vantage point, she can already see. Um. So that's fine. I will say most talking is a free action. That will definitely be one of your actions to, to mime that sufficiently well to get her to pull, to help him. If that's what you want to do. So, I mean, like she would be donating an action to me to that basically. How, no, you would have to use your it? action. Yeah. Well, Jonas's stuff is done mm-hmm. until next. Whatever. Yeah. So you'd have wait, to wait so till you, your wait, next wait, round. Hold on. You, you don't want to do anything else this turn? It's not my turn. No, what are you talking about? Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Because so it's, it's, it's on it's... Davros's turn. Oh well, then you can't do anything because you already used all your action, right? Yeah. I mean, technically. Yeah. Yeah. This would. I. Yeah. We'll have. You'll have to wait till it's. It's okay. your turn. All right. Yeah. But yeah, it's something to keep in mind for sure. Um. I'm sorry. I when you when you said that, I thought for some reason it was it was your turn. Okay, oh, it so is my ra- turn. Oh, you've tricked the DM. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, top of the round, um, uh, Brightholm's roots reach out of the ground, and she pulls uh, the three. Oh, <laughs> oh, um. Okay, I hadn't considered this uh, chain of events, but let's play this out. So she pulls in, and this is a, uh, appropriate too because the one that Davros is in is the farthest. So it all happens in one round, but you, Jonas, and Verk kind of see this happen in sequence. She pulls one of the tokens in, another one, uh, a third, and these all go back into the flame completely. The windows are gone. Her flame regains most of its former power. I will take these off the... Uh, and then you kind of like look behind you, Jonas, and realize that the fourth tendril has pulled up the piece of ground in which lies the portal to cathedrals, the portal which in Davros currently rests. So that gets pulled into her as well. Huh? I will give you a reaction if you want it, because it is going to pass close enough to you, Jonas. I don't know what 
you might do with that. I'm not leading you anywhere, but like if you have any action, you're welcome to take one. Like, Otherwise, uh, Davros is off the board for now. You try to grab what? Like trying to grab him as the flame portal goes by? Well, you can't see him. It's literally just a, a, a big piece of ground, like three feet in diameter with a giant tongue of flame through which you can like kind of see the dim shape of Davros clearly in another world. Um. <laughs> He's passing right by you, right in front of your eyes. You see it. Davros, you turn to like to go back out the portal, like once you've gained this world's knowledge, and see, oh god, and you see yourself pass by and you make eye contact with Jonas. <gasps> the I scream and and motion to him the compass. To like throw it to you? If he can. Oh, 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 okay. Uh d- d- well, kind of drunk d- Davros, do you comply? I I <laughs> I, I don't want to tell you what to do, Devros, but what what do you do? Do you throw him the compass? No, I do not. I yeah, reach I... out my hand towards him with my sword in the other hand, waiting to get pulled out of this. Yeah, that, that looks I like how little... his fist is blurred out. That, that, looks a, that looks a little offensive to me, so I pull back. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah okay. So that's fine. So yeah, Davros, you're off the board. Um, you're pulled into the flame, and as far as you know, Davros is gone. Cool. Uh, we'll get to you in a second, Davros. Well, we'll get to you last. Um, top of the uh, uh, that's her. Act- oh, sorry. And then everybody except for Davros, uh, go ahead and roll me uh, another wisdom save. Oh my God, frats! What? Happened. That's like your third time you've rolled a twenty, and then it it tipped. Yeah. I got a sixteen. Okay. It's just it's just karma for him not uh, trying to do the wombo combo. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, Verk, you make it. Uh, uh, Jonas, jeez, on that one. Jonas, you do not, my friend. You are going to take. So Harkwell doesn't either. Oh, what was what was the roll? Oh, not one. Uh, is that a one or a seven? Okay. Yep. So Harkwell doesn't either. Uh, so uh, Jonas seven damage. Harkwell only two. I'll note that myself actually. Um. And um. Once again, you have disadvantage on your next roll. Um, you're lucky, though. She hasn't gotten to swing at you guys in a while because she's been trying to grab these things back. She now has all of her um, her uh, flame back. She pulls her hands out of the ground and once more reaches as if to strike you. Her turn is over. That was her whole round to get that. But she's clearly able to once now strike out at you. Um, and, Verk, you can see one of her arms trying to reach over. Like, her, her right arm is reaching over to her left side as if to, like, pull you off of her. So she's clearly okay. coming for you next next round. Uh, next action is Verk. All right. Um, try to pull my hand out again. Okay. You no longer have disadvantage because you did stable, stabilize yourself. So athletics at a DC 13. 15. Yep. So you pry with one hand, you pry, and you actually hear the bark crack like you break off a piece of it in order to do it. And the jaws open just enough for you to slide your hand out. It's pretty bad. Uh, You can see uh, bits of flesh dripping off of it, but it didn't go down to the bone just yet. So you still have your use of it. It didn't like sever your nerves or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, You're probably just pretty pissed. But then again, you're a barbarian, so that's fine. Uh, What is your second action? Punch the other eyeball. Okay. Uh, uh, roll that attack. He's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna just keep punching, getting caught, and just keep just prying it out, <laughs> and just like, just like hit, just straight hit point tanking. Here's, the, here's, the, here's a here's a here's a question. As as Bill figures out of you know rolling and hitting and whatever, um, is the eyeball feelable as the maw has grasped the wrist? Yeah. His hand is like right on it yeah, as it was inside right? the tree. So like, yeah. so like, is he like Rorschach? Like, you guys think I'm locked in here with you, but I'm locked in here with you. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, but he he's dealt enough damage both times that he's like he's ruined it. The eyeball has oh, been, okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, Verk, roll roll to the next one. All right, another reckless attack for this round. Of course. Why not? 
Yeah, why not? Okay. Oh, uh, it's like two misses, I think. Uh, gotta pull my other. Where's my sheet? There he is. Weapons. Uh, thirteen to hit. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of—a miss, a narrow oh. miss, but a miss nonetheless. Fortunately, uh, your third action. Probably to attack again, I imagine. Yep. Okay. Can you just reckless attack forever? Can you just do that whenever? Yeah, you it's want? it's like a Jeez. nat twenty. Nat twenty. Um, it's a called action. It gives mm -hmm. me advantage, and on my strength based attacks for the turn. Mm -hmm. And gives me disadvantage on um, incoming attacks. Oh, remind me of that, because I will forget. Okay. Uh, thank you. Anyway, uh, roll damage. and I, uh, I forgot. I, I told you guys you could either roll twice or double the roll. So it's completely up to you. You have to obviously determine it before you make the roll. But... I'm just going to... I was doing double dice before, okay. so I'll do double dice again. Sure. Um... It was to have worked. So four, six, eight, and eleven. Okay, um, eleven. I'm going to give you this for the crit too. You punch it again. You feel that eyeball. You feel it goes all the way through. You feel like the back of the the socket, as it were, <laughs> and it's it's pulverized. And we're going to call the crit not strength but precision. You. Okay. pull your arm back out right as quickly as you punched it in and the jaws snap shut they don't even you don't have to make a reflex uh save they just they just miss you and the jaws actually snap like weakly like the mouth itself like kind of like walls and uh in in weakness uh so that is one more eye off the board that's eight more to go eight more to go and there are no more that you can reach from where you're currently standing gotcha uh that's your whole turn uh Pratz, Jonas, it's your turn. Um, can I reposition to a place where I can hit more than one eye from the ground level? Um, there are, yeah, if you go to, um, oops, like here, um, I'm going to say you can reach at, at the one that was in front of you before and then one more on that side of the track. Okay. Because so, you're, you're kind of standing like... Yeah, hold on. Let me actually... Um, not that it matters too much. I'm going to take off uh, your snap points so that you can actually stand closer. Oh, yeah. Okay. You no longer snap to the grid. Got it. There you go. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to move you. Is If, if you want to, you would have to move there. So that would yeah. be your first. Okay. Um, do you still spend your action trying... Oh, no. He's... Ferk is free. And if you want to do anything with uh, the girl. <gasps> yeah um can i so i kind of want to get the girl to help so okay here's what i want to do i want to tell the girl with hand signals mm -hmm. um oh boy <laughs> fluttering yep, hair are, that's yeah i want i want her to use her hair to lift me up to a position where i can uh, see more eyeball or, or, or get close enough for melee range for more eyeballs. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you like, so okay. I'm, let's say I'm doing that from this position. So I haven't wasted an action to move. Okay. So you spend an action, you turn around to her and you're like, get over here. Ro <laughs> roll me something for this. Cause you're kind of communicating a fairly complicated thing here. Uh, let's think there's no Perf more. Performance? What are the, uh, what would you say, Bill? There's performance. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. You're a bard. Yes. Please roll me performance. Uh, at a DC. <sighs> I'm not looking at your die. That's a tough one. 14. Uh, I pass. So I got a 15. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, so she like cocks an eyeball at you, floats over with incredible <laughs> speed, and then kind of looks up and gives you the like, that seems like a stupid thing, because, like, 
this is a terrifying monster tree, but okay, I guess. And uh, in a, in a, with really <laughs> terrifying alacrity and even more terrifying strength, she just kind of, part of her hair is just keeping her a few inches off the ground. Yeah. The rest of it just like grabs you by the feet and just kind of flings you up. Like it's not hard. <laughs> it's, it's, it's trivial for her. Uh, you are now about to this high. Let me get this out of here. Um, there you are. Uh, you are, what do we say? Five, does that f five, ten? Yeah, that's five feet. You're five feet off the ground. You're standing one full, like, or like five and a half, whatever. You're like one full human's um, uh, length above. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can reach three eyeballs, one to your far to your left, one right below you where you were standing before, and one above you from where you're standing. I don't know if you have three attacks, but you can hit three. If you... uh, well, I've, I wasted an action for that, so uh, I should have two attacks. Um, so yeah, I'll take uh, yeah. Two, I'll take two swings at at. I mean, I'll take a swing at an eyeball and see how that goes. <laughs> um, you notice that while pretty strong, you don't you're not you see her kind of like a bead of sweat pops on her forehead. She's kind of straining. She probably can't do this forever. Yeah, sure. Um. And uh, you're going to make two attacks, one against each eyeball. Well, let's see how the first one goes. Like, because I, I, okay. if, if I repeat it against the first one, yeah. Whatever. And my next roll is disadvantage, right? Yes. Did I miss that will save? Mm hmm. Uh, so 14 is my lowest one. Uh, that's a hit. That's the AC of the eyes. Okay. Exactly. Um, how to do? Oh, was one of them all. a twenty? One of them was a twenty. Uh that's a shame. Yeah. Well, S happens. Um, and a D six plus two damage. A D six is it? There's one right next to you. Oh, that's right. That is Verks. Not bad. Uh, so that's eight. Gosh darn it. <laughs> that is uh, eight damage. Is that you? Okay. No, that was Bill. Eight on... Okay, eight on the dot. Um, you stab the eye, and uh, it. Uh, she screams out again. Um, the eye is punctured. Let's go ahead and take that off the board. However, my friend, I will ask you to roll me a reflex save. Your arm won't get trapped, but your sword might. Oh, in that in your favor that time, it was almost terrible, but then it wasn't. You pull yeah. the sword back out. Uh, you are free to make your next attack. Cool. And this time, not a disadvantage. Right, right, right. Um, so, yeah, so I attack the second eye. Oh, I am sorry. Oh, that's fine. Swing and a miss. Yep. Um. Davros. Davros, 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 my friend. All right, well. so. Oh, okay, that's true. That is true. <laughs> okay, uh, so Harkwell sees. Harkwell trying to regain or like to, to retain the power of his own soul to stop his flesh from being consumed by this, this terrible blue fire. And he follows your eye line and sees what you see, which is... Uh, Davros getting swept into the body of this tree uh, and uh, looks back at you as if to say like oh, oh god uh, he, he's horrified um, but he uh, is going to roll himself another will save or wisdom save he's the big old d20 here Uh, a total of a 13. He makes it barely. He takes that blue flame and he like, there's a, a, a snap. And actually you hear one of her branches break in half oh. as the flame disconnects from her. <laughs> and he like holds it and it's, it's like he's barely hanging on to it and he 
turns to you, Jonas, and he like, as if it's a great weight, as if he can barely sustain it, holds it out and offers it up to you. I know it's not your turn, but do you make any action? Oh, go. oh it's even better. He offers it up because you're floating above him. So it's this absolute devotion, this subservience, the, the pose that you want to see for the rest of your life because of who you are. <laughs> um, and he holds it up to you as if to say, please take this. This is rightfully yours. The person who definitely wasn't lying about being able to take me to my holy land. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be so great when he finds out that you were definitely telling the truth this whole time and totally know where the thing is that he wants. Um, At least I only lied to a little girl. <laughs> I don't know if that's better. I don't know <laughs> if that's an improvement. No. Um, you're both going to have to reckon with At least these I two lie. being like, hold on. At least I lie and succeed, all right? That's, you did succeed. I successfully <laughs> lied to the girl, finally. It's true. <laughs> finally. Um, he, his only successful lie was to a little girl. Uh, Frats, do you, or Jonas, <laughs> so, do, what, what, do you... What was he holding out to me? It's a it's a piece of the bark? Of the blue flame. Oh. Uh, I mean, if he's offering it to me, I absolutely take it. Okay. You, you never you never turn down blue flame. Never. Uh, we'll mean, get to that on your turn, my friend. Yep. But you take it. You reach your, your left hand out. <clears throat> Are you right or left-handed? Uh, I, you know what? I stabbed with, I, I, I let, let's say I just swung with my dominant hand. So like in the, in the motion of balance while I'm like floating with this hair and I don't really know what's going on balance wise, mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm putting out my left hand. Okay. To accommodate. And you look down, he offers it to you <laughs> and you just grasp. Yeah. All right. If it's Davros, I put it in my pocket. It's not Davros. <laughs> he had already pulled this flame the round before Davros got pulled in. I got you. Uh, uh, Davros, That's... it is now your turn. Um, Let's clear the board. Yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. So for a moment, everything is quiet. And uh, you find yourself in a uh, musty brick prison cell you look around you you're sitting in a chair you're not um handcuffed or otherwise restrained uh there's no one in the room with you right now there is a door up into your right and another chair across the table from you and you recognize this immediately as fairweather interrogation prison. Or yeah. the interrogation room mm -hmm. and you uh before you do anything or make any decisions uh the door swings open and you see bright home dressed as she was in that prison even though she wasn't your interrogator uh walk in actually who walks in is uh um your interrogator which was um serenity harnam uh serenity walks in and then as you blink, maybe her image flickers, and you realize it is—it is in fact actually Brightholm. Um, she takes a seat opposite you, and you can hear the battle outside the prison. Uh, if you recall the sounds of the destruction of the apocalypse happening outside, but this time it is the sounds. You think it's the same thing, and then you clearly hear uh, someone yell "Verk!" Like you—you you can hear that it is in fact the battle currently raging outside Brightholm's body. Um, and she looks at you and drums her fingers on the table as if to, trying to figure out what to do with you. Um, and she says, you're a liar. Not a very good one. Not a very good one. And? You lied to that little girl. You, and you can, it's this sort of general you, lied to Harkwell. You have no idea what you're doing. You wouldn't know the cathedral if you crash landed on it from space. You're lying to these people. And there's going to be a cost to pay for them. Assuming. And she kind of like, makes a chomping motion with her teeth. 
that you live to face those consequences. Davros will look over his bloodied and battered body and say, Well, it was kind of a last ditch effort anyway, so. Oh, do sorry. I still have my... Do you still have what? My sword. You do. Now, none of the effects that I had given you, the two effects I gave you from uh, Songs and Storms, and the effect you're going to get from, from Cathedrals aren't active because you're not physically like out in the world. So those are still pending. You didn't lose them. If you ever get out, you'll have them. But for right now, you're as broken and bloody and as demoralized as you were before. What is your actual wounds total? Remaining? Yeah. Four. <laughs> I didn't realize you had four wounds. That's why I asked you. He did a lot of said... I was trying to make a last ditch effort. Yeah, of, no, this, oh, that was a smart try. play. Yeah, that's a smart play. So yeah, she, you are like, you're, you're kind of like sitting up in your chair, but it's clear you're like buckling. You're like bleeding all over the table. Uh, you spit out a tooth as you're trying to say a lot. La- you see last ditch effort, a tooth falls out of your mouth and rolls across the table. She just picks up the tooth and looks at it. Um. <laughs> What if I made you a deal? Depends on the terms. They're simple terms. Stop this now. Help me get out of this. And she kind of looks around as if she's thinking of a suitable reward. I'll... Snaps her fingers. I'll stop them from killing you. Who is them? Davros, or um, Jonas and Verk, as you're struggling here. And Jonas, you're just re- oh, shoot, Jonas, you haven't yet grabbed the fire. You're mm-hmm. about to touch it. Your fingertips are on it. You can feel the power coming from it. Yep. Verk, you're still just like, dup, 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 climbing up a tree, punching <laughs> eyeballs. Like, there's nothing dramatic happening with you. You're just like, just completely clueless on just, what's going on. Just punching eyeballs. I mean, you've done a lot of work. Uh, you've taken out, I think, four eyeballs by yourself. You're just like, just putting in your, t- you punch in, punch out. Just, just punching eyeballs. Um, and uh, both of you hear uh, uh, rustling uh, uh, movement through the underbrush and then uh, the cocking of a gun. Jonas, um, uh, or Davros, um, she, um, Brightholm, uh, waves her hand up towards the ceiling and then looks up. You look up as well. You see, uh, from her eyes, from the eyes of her, her arboreous Brightholm self, uh, to the, um, to the battlefield. And you see looking over the tops of the trees, a flash of white light, and then the movement through the underbrush. And then you hear the cocking of the guns. I'd like you to roll me um, insight. Twenty three. Um, all right. Um, she is lying to you. <laughs> uh, not the vision. You're pretty sure that that's what's happening out there. Um, but she, whatever part of the deal is, uh, she's offering you, she is holding something back. She's not telling you something. She's not going to follow through. She's lying to you about something. Is the device responsive? Oh, completely inert. It like, Neither you nor the device technically really exists now. I'll tell you what. You let my companions, and then in the middle of my sentence, I'm going to lunge forward and 
try and just jam the sword through as far as I can into her. That's I like that a lot. Um, roll me. Um, this would be like a great feint. There's probably a rogue feat for this somewhere in in um, in three five in Pathfinder. Um, but I'd love to give you something for that. Um, it's five e, so it's so easy. Just yeah, I'm gonna give you advantage on this. Um, Acrobatic. Yeah, but like so five e is weird, right? So if I normally if you do a cool thing it's easy to reward you with advantage if i make him then like he has a cool idea then he has to roll to execute it all the roll does is like give him a thing i could just give him anyway it feels a little weak and then he's got a chance to fail and then no matter how cool his idea was he's Oakley. botched it by thanks man you know, fucking no up his roll. he doesn't get to do the cool thing he wanted to do and it, it's, a thousand it's, a, gotcha. it's a sharp I appreciate scene it, man that's um, awesome so thanks for the um, love just take thanks advantage for tuning in. uh on this roll hope you're enjoying Didn't need it. <laughs> um, uh, and this is her magic, the the magic short sword. So I so don't she, know what effect goes into that. So she says. So uh, you say, I tell you what. You should throw us one more. Let bit my companion, so and then just overtake, like leap over the table, uh, jam the sword into her. Are, Francis, if you're talking, you're muted. No, I'm talking to Oakley. He just threw us a thousand biddies. Oh, thanks, Oakley. Or thanks, Nova Intrepid. Yeah. Um. Uh, where was I? Okay. Um, so uh, did the uh, did the alert pop up on, you on screen? Hit by the, way? the back of the chair. Oh. It sinks right in. You're like off balance because you're like over the table. Uh, roll me damage, please. Uh, sneak attack on this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. She is not expecting it. We should see if there's a tabletop simulator like dice roll box that I can like zoom in on when we're rolling stuff. There's a uh, dice towers we can like I can just put it in a fixed spot and you know to zoom in on that. Yeah. Or, but yeah, we're not going to be in in this for much longer. Much longer. Yeah. Ah, it's a shame. You can spend a truth to maximize uh, uh damage dice rolls. Same way you can use it to maximize a d20. Yeah, I want to do that. Okay, I'll grab it. All right, so that is a 12. Uh, do you add anything to that? Do you, I, I guess just uh, your strength still. He, my dex. Um, so 15. 15? Mm -hmm. um, it plunges right through her. It hits the back of the board. She looks down. Um, roll me a... Uh, this is gonna get this is gonna get dirty. Um, roll me opposed athletics. Oh no, just straight strength, straight strength check, please. She has advantage on. Oops, let me. I'm not even looking at it. Uh, I need to. <coughs> she has advantage because the sword is currently in. Oh. Ouch. He's got it. Um, she reaches down and she goes to grab the sword from you, and you are weak. You are barely hanging on, but you're able to just, with this burst of strength, maybe not the the raw power from those worlds, but the feeling from them. You pull the sword out, and she looks down at this wound. Thanks, man. She stands up. I'm going to take you off the board here. Davros, we are going to roll a parallel initiative for your fight with the soul of Brightholm. Uh, and as that's the end of the round, and it is exactly 9.30, that's a great spot for a five-minute break. Um, think about what you guys are going to do next. So, Davros, um, you're in uh, this prison room. You don't know what's outside the door of this prison cell. Um, you are armed. She is not. This is, however, her soul that you're <laughs> fighting in. Uh, uh, and you have four hit points left. Uh, uh, the... Um, and I'll, I'll give you this bit of like, well, I'll give you this. Do with this what you will. You feel 
the emotions of those worlds. You feel the triumph, the bloodlust, and the serenity of cathedrals. But you don't you can't grasp onto their power because your physical body is not here. You can feel them near you. So if you can think of a way, if you can pitch me a way that you can access that power, I'm willing to listen. Um to the rest of you, Verk and Jonas, uh, you Verk or Jonas, you are about to grasp a piece of blue flame. You are halfway up this tree's body, trying to stab more eyeballs. Verk, you're punching in, punching out, quite literally. Um, and she has seven eyeballs left. Um, let's leave it there. We'll come back in like what five? We'll call it five, six, seven. Yeah, so nine thirty-seven. Yeah, that's fine. Um. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then. I'll be back. Cool. All right, guys, we'll take a five-minute cool. break. Yeah. Throw up the old AFK. That up for now. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. Give us.
Oh, 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 oh. Guess what? They opened a bar. Um, and and we're is back. Skyler, is, is Skylar your daughter or your wife? Skylar's my daughter. Grip even better. So just two, just the two kids. <laughs> exactly. Um, and we're okay. back. We're back. We're with back. Snacks with snacks and drinks and snack. I don't have either of those. And more D and D shenanigans. Yeah. Um, so we have ourselves a little uh, parallel initiative here. Um, Um, roll me, uh, roll me your D10, uh, Davros, we'll get this set up here. Ouch. All right, you go first. Boop. Killer. Boop. I believe that is the plan, Verk. I think that is <laughs> the objective. Um, why does it have a little D6? Oh, it's a little, a little squirmy, a little squirmy... <laughs> grubbly gross rat thing um so you just went so we'll call that the beginning of that combat uh let's go back outside to uh to the scene out here uh did arboreus bright home go no right not on the outside mm -hmm. right okay you guys could just lie to me and be like yeah she totally did we took a bunch of damage it's our turn now she um, completely whiffed. Uh, yeah. Huh. She actually she um, rolled a one and healed us. Oh, man, that's crazy. That's definitely what rolling ones do. Um, uh, it's her turn. Uh, and she... This is a woman? What? <laughs> oh. You look up at her face, so you can't help but look up because you're kind of leaning back. You're kind of resting on this hair, right? And uh, after you pull a sword out, you're falling backwards kind of slowly, Jonas, sure. mm -hmm. uh, reaching out to grab this blue flame. And you look up and you see her face 
she has the thousand yards here. She just looks straight ahead, and you see blood trickle out the corner of her lip. Can I tell whether this is we're doing because it because of our physical damage, or is it? It is like be... it is like a beat after Davros gets pulled in, so it's not too. It doesn't strain credulity too much to put two and two together. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I figured was. Yeah, and was... to make it even clearer, like Verk is currently in, like he's lining up his next punch. He hasn't hit her yet, and all of a sudden she just like, like that. Snaps ahead and, and and starts to uh, to bleed out of her. I'm mind. doing it. He, yeah, Burke is like I <laughs> single handedly. Burke strongly believes. I mean, guys, episode, remember episode zero? I ripped his head off. <laughs> That's right. Like <laughs> you're not wrong. Um, so uh, she looks straight ahead and as if she's just batting at flies. Um, Almost absent-mindedly, she's going to swing at you guys, and oh, of course, the eyeballs are going to look at you and, and try to uh, um, try to assault you. Are very psyche. Uh, so the two of you, are, the three of you that are left, uh, oh, and the little girl. I'll roll for her. I'll roll for her. So everyone, roll me wisdom. Oh, Dan. That's why I forgot. Yeah. I f I, for I should have rolled another d6 back Nat then 20. because I have uh, my sneak attack is 2d6 since I'm ah old. well unfortunately you'll have to remember next time it's but. cool I uh, I just was telling you for next time when I yeah. roll more well yeah. if I get to it gets like uh Kurt you're just adding d6s here I know you're a rogue but uh Hark Hark um, rolls a thirteen he uh, the roll is a thirteen yeah he makes it um, what'd you roll I nat twenty it okay uh, down to Verk seventeen. Wow. All right. Uh, you guys, and that, that, there's no mechanical effect here, but that fits narratively as the psychic assault continues and you see her blink, so to speak, right? The next time those eyeballs lock eyes with you, you stare right back and nothing happens. You, you don't feel your morale drain. You don't feel your psyche assaulted. Um, she does, however, still swing at you. Uh, she goes to knock you out of the air. Jonas, she sees you reach for the blue flame. Yeah, she's got disadvantage, And that kind of right? snaps her back, would you say? She's got disadvantage. I'm floating on hair. Uh, but you mean you can't dodge. a cat toy dangling in front of her. Yeah, you can't <laughs> dodge, though. Yeah, but so she's aiming at me, right? She's aiming uh -huh. at my body. Uh -huh. But my body is suspended by someone else. So does that does that make sense? Like she has to anticipate the girl's hair movement to where my body's going to be to make sure she lands a hit. If the girl moves her hair. Well, I mean the the huge tree is swiping a really big arm at something. Like I would I would think there'd be a reflex somewhere. Here's what I will do. I will give um, the girl a reflex reaction. Okay. Um, if. Um, she beats a DC uh, 12. Um, I will give Brightholm disadvantage on this roll. Okay. Uh, here is, I'm going to use this. Uh, are you rolling for her? Yeah, well, yeah, why not? Okay. I was going to say, she is scared of this thing, so she yeah. could be more apt she to. Has a de she has a plus two to this roll. Well, that's 17. Actually, plus. Oh, okay. I didn't even see the roll. Okay. I rolled so. A 15, uh, yeah. Okay, so Brighthelm has an advantage. So she reaches the arm back. The little girl sees it. She she screams out and she like reels back. Um, uh, disadvantage on the hit. However, frats, when it comes to your turn, you might suffer a little bit of penalty to grab this blue flame because you were just pulled back. We'll see. Uh, geez, what's your armor class? Oh, it's pretty low. I think I still got you. Uh, Thirteen. I do, in fact, hit you. Okay. Just just barely. Um, so <laughs> the um, claw swings out at you. You're going to take a whole d10 of damage. Oh, this isn't my dice. That's rude of me. Oh. Three damage total uh, to you, sir. Very poor. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, she is going to, um, she's going to swing at you. Would... Now, Verk is really, <laughs> her other arm is, that was her left arm. Her right arm is going to try to reach over and like 
pick Verk off the side. Uh, Verk, she's going to try to grapple you in her hand. Um, what is it? Is the grapple just an opposed athletics roll? Yep. Okay, so we'll just do opposed athletics. So, question. Uh-huh. With the, uh... Well, no. It would still come out to just the athletics. Okay, cool. Do you... Okay, um, let me think. You know, she's way bigger than you. The claws the size of you. I am going to give her advantage on that. So, with grappling? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is where I was starting to, to ask. Mm -hmm. I have the primal path while enraging. You may grapple creatures two sizes larger than you. The creature, um, yeah, spirit yeah. of the snake gives you the strength to hold on tight. Well, the, the reason she would be getting the grapple advantage is due to the size advantage. And that, regardless of the, the, the numerical specifics of that trait... The spirit of it is that you're not disadvantaged when grappling large things. So that's that's totally fair. It looked like you kept Oof. talking after you said totally fair. I did. Did, did not no one hear me? No. no, but, no uh, but now you sound like a... Yeah, now you sound like one frats was going secret oh. service on us. You, oh, yeah? Yeah, did you just do something to your microphone? <laughs> No, I'm gonna disconnect and reconnect. Oh no, it's your microphone. You need to unplug and replug it in. You're having the same problem that I had. Your your microphone is not in a uh, power consistent uh, USB port, and now we don't hear you at all. Just make sure um, Discord is uh, listening to the right device. Because as soon as you unplug and replug, it probably reset the D. What about now? Yep. And there we go. Nice and normal. And you sound normal. Yep. It's a key. It's my keyboard USB pass through, but it's B three There is another thing plugged in right next to it, and there's another USB. <laughs> So it's not it's not um, like physical power co consumption like it is physical power consumption but it's not um, like something that you would physical physically look at the logic of of a USB port it's like literally the way the port is designed it either gets the blue yeti enough power or it doesn't and if it doesn't from time to time it uh, distorts the sound and, and now, you're out and, again and now we lost your audio again I would recommend a, a USB port directly on your tower, uh, probably 2.0. <clears throat> it's weird that it's never happened, like, for us to like, diagnose it before. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Bright Home slips and falls. Um... <laughs> Kurt, Kurt, we see you. <laughs> Ted, what's the spirit of the buffalo? Is that what the barbarian's using? The serpent? The spirit of the buffalo. I don't know if he's mocking what we're doing or... Oh, in chat. See that? I don't know. Well, he's a, oh, he's surfing a, a buff. Yeah, he's... A, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I got you. And now we've lost our DM. Ted, you missed it. Um, in very Dan fashion... Uh, Dan took Kurt's player off the board. Uh, Dan has Davros in the psyche and soul of Brightholm fighting from the inside out. The fuck? Who? Oh. Don't all cap... Don't auto spamming. <laughs> don't all cap shit. 
Uh, yeah, if Dan's not around, uh, I think the loot giving capacity uh, automatically goes to the streamer. <laughs> If you are talking, Dan, still nothing. Why'd all his uh Can you hear me now? Yep. Messages get deleted. Yeah. Uh, because he all caps it. Yeah, we hear you, Dan. Uh... Okay. I, I literally can't like every port I'd have to rewire everything. Everything oh, that's is like that's fine. tied just, up back there. You, we said we, we hear we hear you now, so you're good. Okay. Alright, just let me know and I'll try to I unplugged the other thing that was on my keyboard in case that was causing interference. It's possible. Um, and uh, we'll 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 leave it alone for now. Because uh, I've been using this setup for weeks with nothing. Um, anyway. Um, we are what? I think I was trying to grapple. <laughs> it happened again, Dan. <laughs> Just be in Wipro. It's fine. <laughs> it, there was like a there was like a click and then and then it's talking like this. It's fine, dude. Just uh, we can either play out the rest of the session with the weird mic, or uh, if you can plug it in some. I, I don't. I don't know if you, if you're saying there was a different setup or something. Maybe he but, dropped um, out of Discord. Oh, completely. What if What if we unmute him on Skype? Still bad. Yeah. No, it's well, not, we it's can not hear you. bad. It's, it's you're not just bad. You're it's just it's like is it's like five levels lower. From a toad. That's, I, <clears throat> what, we can live with that. We can, I, we can certainly live with it for the rest of the sesh and figure it out. Oh, but, we the, do, uh, but we do need to hear you. We're not picking anything up from you right now. What about now? There we go. There oh, we go. Oh, oh, that sounds better, too. Okay. Don't touch it. Yeah. Don't even I, think about it. I just, I just put it in a different port on the other port on the keyboard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <sighs> anyway, uh, I need to redo my whole shit. Um, okay. So you were saying something about right home uh, to grapple Verk. Yes. Um, did we roll that? I think you guys were getting ready to. Right. You were. You were figuring out if you had a, a declared like advantage. No, we we went past that. I, oh yeah, here's my roll. I rolled a ten. My total is a thirteen. Oh, athletics. It's a fifteen. What do you have, Verk? Uh, fifteen or no? Sorry, ten. Okay, so I, I do have you. All right, so I mean, for all for all I know, given that you're a barbarian, this may be what you want, because you're a crazy person. But she grabs you. <laughs> And pulls you onto to you are now on the other side of her. Uh, hey, move me closer to new eyeballs. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I mean. <laughs> this, this guy is a problem solver. <laughs> I'm not surrounded. I'm in a target rich environment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Right, Verk, she grabs you, she holds you up, and uh, her mouth, which is bleeding, by the way, opens up, and you you hear the cracking of bark and the tearing of flesh, and her uh, face opens up, like her whole, uh, the whole facade splits in half um, into this massive toothed maw. Um, her, uh, it's now maybe like, two feet wide. Yes, exactly what Kurt's face is doing. Uh, it cracks open. You can see the blood and the teeth, and you can smell the, the, the rotted foliage from within, and she is going to try to bite your head off. But that is, unfortunately, her next turn. Um, next is uh, Vark, actually. So it's your turn. All right. So... How long would you say her arms are? Thirty feet. Okay. So 
can I do a athletics to get out of her, like loosen her grip from a hand so I can slither out kind of thing and then climb across her arm over toward her shoulder? Uh, I will call that two actions. One to get out and one to... And then one to move. Clamber across, yeah. Yep. Okay. And now, so, now for for you're my you're my grapple lawyer here. So for grapple yep. to is it just the roll again, or is there any advantage or disadvantage going on? Um, I would imagine this would be almost like a pin. So I'd have to be opposed because <laughs> she's going to try to hold on to me as I'm trying to get out. Right? Yeah. No, it's definitely opposed. But is there any modifiers to these rolls, or are they just we just no? They're just, they're usually athletics. Okay. Oh, I I litter. I think you have to. That's like a dead. Uh, yeah, split. that's a tilt. He has to reroll that. I'm looking at it from the side too. Yeah, here, let's get these out of the way. All right. I'll take it because <laughs> <laughs> that could have been really bad. A sixteen or a one. That's oh, better than. Oh, a two, it's better than being friend. a one. <laughs> uh, you have. You guys have two truth left. You know what? I'm going to take that because I don't want to be eaten. Okay. Uh, it's not mine. No faith. No faith work. I don't know what you're doing. I know. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, guys, if I'm anybody... stabbing her soul. I, I don't... You know <laughs> what? I think, was, I think. If anybody was stuck in a meta landscape that Dan had cooked up, it should have been me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Because he would have been like, uh, he would have just convinced her soul that he's God or some bullshit. <laughs> like, he would have pulled some stupid... Anyway, uh, so you take, so you use a truth, you use your action, you uh, reach down, you physically pull these fingers off of you. Um, now, roll me athletics to... Athletics or acrobatics? Acrobatics if you're bouncing, athletics if you're, like, on your, like, using your hands just... and feet to kind of clamber across. Yeah, I mean, I, I imagine that he's just, like, Going in with his hands and just clawing his way okay. across right. the park. Uh, just a DC 10 athletics. I've described it as a rough tree, and it's it's got pretty, pretty thick, good. so you should 13. Okay, so you clamber across it. You're at your very last action. You are now standing on her shoulder. I'm assuming no eyeballs in sight. At this level, no. You're at face level to her. Hmm. Punching like her, her her actual face yes are punching that plushy yeah. face i'm gonna punch her in the face <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, do right. i still see the view from like yes. if i look up yes <laughs> so i see burke's fist <laughs> go yes. yep <laughs> you sure do uh roll it verk <laughs> yeah kurt kurt's effectively seeing this <laughs> that's yeah um i'm gonna go ahead and do a reckless attack as well uh 15 to hit so here's the problem burke you hit her in the face most of her face is currently mouth most of that mouth is teeth. So you punch her, and as your fist lands right in like the, the, the soft, fleshy part of her cheek, she turns and it slips into her mouth, and she opens wider, and she goes to bite your arm. Um, are you... Is there any way you can convince me that this isn't the same arm that um, you were using before that got hurt? Probably not. Okay. So you're punching with that same arm, which, as I recall, was at 5 and 15 points of damage towards being bitten off. Um, and um, uh, you are going to roll me... Oh, I'm going to roll an... This is basically her attack of opportunity. I'm going to roll an opposed attack. Uh, what's your armor class? Uh, pull it back up. 14. Nope. I burn a truth. I'm going to take 20 on that one. Um, and 
she uh, bites down on your arm. You now see like the the He's Merc a funny pirate name wriggling and 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 maybe screaming uh, uh, Davros um, as uh, his hand is now in her in her maw. And I am going to roll this dice. This die. Ah, uh, a three. All right. Know, she chomps down for three damage. You are at eight out of 15 uh, damage, my friend. Half. Oh, because it's because uh, you're a bullshit. So good you're, you're a <laughs> <laughs> half, round, half rounded up. So two. Oh, no. Hold. Plus strength amount. I'm sorry. So five. So half round. So actually still three. Okay. Yep. Uh, so you're at eight out of 15. Um, and did she take damage from me hitting her? Oh, yeah. She, no. Oh, go ahead and roll damage. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Just want to make sure. Uh, two, four, seven. Okay. Do uh, I notice any uh, discomfort? Yeah, yeah no, she, it's it's oh, she, and Jonas by or Davros by the way, you see her as you you pull the sword back. She also like reels from the hit in her soul. Um. Verk, you see this as well. You see her her recoil. It it it's it's impactful. No worries okay. about that. Um, that's your last action, I believe. Yes. Are we down to Jonas? Right. Yeah, probably. Uh, Jonas, it's your turn. You and uh, the little girl. Do I touchy touchy blue flamies? <sighs> okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. Tone isn't a thing. Uh. So. <laughs> You um, roll me uh, dexterity to grab it at disadvantage. DC ten. That one. <clears throat> uh, nope, swing and a miss. Thanks. So you burn a truth. Um, you guys have exactly one truth left. Um, you better hang on to that shit. Uh, and you you like you slip and then you lurch forward uh, and uh, grab it. For a second, you feel nothing but pure pain. Oh, great. Uh, uh, Dan, you know what? Uh, we're just gonna... yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this actually is the blue flame of of instant death. Unfortunately, I didn't I didn't name it for you. Um, so you feel nothing. You feel nothing but pain uh, as as you grab it. Uh, and do you let go? I assume the answer is no. No. Okay. The pain kind of washes over you. And it feels like time slows down. It feels like everything is just you and this this pain. It's overwhelming. It starts to bite down through your nerves into your mind. You can feel it pulling out as if it's reaching in and just sorting through all of the memories you've had that you'd rather not um, bring to the front of your mind. All the, the, the people that have wronged you, all the blood on your hands, it just kind of picks them all up and pulls them to the forefront. Uh, and kind of rolls it over in its hands and and shows it to you as if to say, is this you? Is this all that you are? Uh, and after a while, it picks through the rest of you and lays it all out as if it's a puzzle. Um, there's your first uh, birthday party. Um, there's the time you killed 73 people. There's uh, <laughs> there's uh, your your very first friend. There's the time that you burnt dinner and almost ended up burning your old house down because you were too busy uh, combing through old texts you had found at the library. It's the entirety of your circumstances uh, laid out in a vision. And as if to say, is there something here oh, it's slender. I should be looking at? After a while, you don't notice the pain anymore. It's just a part of you. Um, and 
you look at it, it makes eye contact with you. And you realize in that very moment what this is, it is a very small piece of actual divinity. It's the very tiniest moat of godhood. Also in that moment, you realize that you've never come close. So your 73 murders, you, did you come out of that thinking like, I need to adjust my formula? What was your reaction to that, to your failed attempt at Godhood Ascension? Oh, oh no, that, that was not the way to go about it at all. Um, I think. <clears throat> Did you still want to try again? Yes, very much so. Okay. Okay. Almost, almost as a redemption to, uh, almost in a, in a redeeming way of, they gave up. There's a value to their lives. Now, I, I can't maybe bring them back from the dead, and I can't. And I'm not cost, try, yeah. And I'm not trying to be good, but yeah. but there's a redemption to a uh, a a, to, a sum total of the of loss, and I'm trying yeah. to and I'm trying to uh trying to it would be uh, a, balance that. It'd equation. be a waste to quit now. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You realize you were a fool. You weren't even close. You were nothing. You had you hadn't even you weren't even on the right path. If this was a if this was a mathematical formula, um, you weren't even using the right science. What you're holding in your hand now, that spark, it's undeniable. It's completely true. This reveals to you two things. A, you had absolutely failed before. B, this is a part of Brightholm. And remember in the very first session when I said it's almost like she knows something you don't? You know now for a certainty she absolutely knows something you don't. She knows how to become a god. And this is proof. It's not yes. enough. It's not a whole god. It's not an entire portfolio. But it's the tiniest first step. And you know in your heart you start, uh, you tear up realizing this, that it is absolutely true that she reached somewhere you didn't. Now. Hey, hey man, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. What do you do with that? How do you react to that, to that realization? Um, that Brightholm has knowledge about how to become a god? Yes. That, that more, more importantly, not knowledge, like she, she's taken her first step. She's got a piece of that power in actuality. She has touched divinity and you weren't even close. And along the path you were heading, you weren't ever going to get close. Um, I, I think it's enough for me to kind of change my thought process. Uh, okay. that, that Brightholm, although Brightholm does need to be stopped. Shh, honey, sure. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. That while Brightholm needs to be stopped and we don't want to die, obviously, and if her if her intent is to kill us, uh, then we need to intervene. But I I want at that knowledge. Okay. I, I I want to convene with her, and potentially, if I have to, rip it from her. It doesn't discourage you. What would discourage me? Okay, that's fine. No, to, no, no. To know that you there, there's definitely a. Uh, no a way to look at it. No, yeah. no, okay. no, 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 no. It would in, it would encourage me that there is like remember the way I described I went about getting you know attempting to become a god was basically like the kung fu hustle. Um, a, a gypsy sold me a brochure that yeah. that yeah. said you could become a god by getting a whole bunch of followers and and them making the ultimate yeah. sacrifice in your name. Yeah, and that didn't work. And yeah. a little bit of me died that day knowing, you know, that, wow, I, I wasted all of this value in life of these people's lives for literally nothing, for, for mm -hmm. ch chasing a goose. And I'm now for the first time seeing that, oh, holy crap, there is an ascension process. Mm -hmm. You know, there, yeah. there's verifiable proof uh, yeah. that, that it can be achieved. Oh, hell yeah. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And there's one thing I forgot after the break, uh, and uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll get to that in a little second. I feel a little silly having forgotten it. But you reach out, you grab that that piece of divinity, 
and all the pain completely vanishes. You're left with this wave of euphoria, like after uh, <laughs> after a particularly strong hot sauce. Uh, there's numbness and then euphoria, and you look up at her, and uh, you realize it takes you a moment because you're 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 nowhere different than where you're before. You're you're still floating in front of her. You realize that you're not floating because the girl has is holding you up. You're floating on your own. Um, you now have a single piece of true divinity within you. Couple things about this. This will not last forever. You don't know exactly how long it's going to last, but you can feel it already fading from you because you are not powerful enough to actually, like, this isn't yours, right? You didn't make this. You don't actually know how it was made. You just know it's real. Uh, and you don't know how to hold on to it. It's already fading from you. Uh, I would say you have... I'm just going to... You have until the end of next round before it's gone. I have until the end of next round for I'm sorry, what? <laughs> to do whatever you want with this power. You have to pitch you're going to have to figure out what it what it does and what it is, but you have until the end of next round. Okay. You have a single piece of divinity. Um Brightholm <laughs> You see, uh, she can't really turn her whole because she's busy biting off of her sand right now. But you see her look down at you and she realizes now on how many fronts she is fighting. You've genuinely got a piece of her divinity here that she worked so hard for. Verk is punching her in the face and she's trying to bite his arm off. And also, as we're going to cut you in a moment, uh, Davros is stabbing her soul in her own body. Um, I believe you have two more actions this round, Jonas. Yeah. <clears throat> um I have until the end of next round to figure out what to do with this divinity. Um, it would be really cool. Ted says to always wish for more wishes. Mm. That's fair. Um, it would be really cool to call upon the strength of 73 lost souls. But I'm trying to think of something that makes sense while also not crossing that zombie resurrection line while also uh, being narratively appropriate. Appropriate, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so what if this... <clears throat> So I know Davros went into that blue flame and is probably in the realm of crazy weird things we've observed, probably in somewhere within Brightholm, right? Yes. Okay, that that's enough for Jonas to divine. Yeah. So uh <sighs> what if I called upon the strength of the seventy three souls to reinvigorate Davros? Knowing, I don't think he'd say no to that. The guy at four hit points. No, knowing he, uh, was yeah. Knowing he looked worse for wear, right before he got sucked into, uh, you know this creature's, you know whatever. I I do agree with uh, in general with uh, Agni Chim, uh, who's uh, uh, talking now in the chat. Uh, this sounds like a perfect opportunity to break the campaign. I always support breaking the campaign. 
not to discount your idea. It's it's I'm sure he could use more than the four hit points he has, <laughs> but I'm never opposed to a little campaign breaking. Uh, those are always the best parts. Um, I mean, this is this is obviously a one use charge, right? Yeah, you've got yeah, one yeah. piece. It is one one moat of divinity. Ah. Uh, Do you want but, me to come back to you? No. Well, it, it, in a, so what I've just pitched sounds reason like like within reason. That sounds like a totally reasonable spell one could cast. Yeah. Okay. So that that's yeah that that's my that's in my um. Uh, that's in my wheelhouse. I guess, yeah. Um, if, if Harkwell has something that he can do, um, or if we want to move on to the Davros, uh, the Davros Bright, Bright Home, and I'll, I'll hold to the end of the round, maybe? Yeah, that... let's do that. Let's cut to that, and let's give you some time to think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think, I think you've got a little more bite in there. I think you've got something that, that you can, well, that you can... And... And here. knowing that you're asking me to go uh, maybe just a little bit further, like I yeah, uh, yeah fuck it, man, break, break the fine. campaign. <laughs> uh, that's that's you know me, man. That's my jam. Um, all right. Uh, uh, and right as you're think, oh, also let's give you this because this is the thing I forgot. By the way, that I, I didn't mention at the beginning of the round. Right as uh, you're thinking about it, you hear the words "take the shot." I don't know if you remember the clicking of the guns and the arrival of the armed men last round. Uh, but I forgot about them. Um, you hear it, uh, Verk. You can see just beyond Brightholm them lining up at the very edge of the ruins of the pharmaceutical lab. They're, like, taking positions. They have their guns trained. Which, uh, like, the opposite side of where I'm standing? Correct. Okay. Coming from, if you are, if you are at the west, they're coming from the east. So judge, look actually, yeah, right from where Fratz is. Fratz is the perfect perspective. He has one that I have. Um, Davros. Uh, did you win initiative? I believe you did. I did. Yeah, you guys yes. tied, right. so you're letting him go first. All right, right, I think. No, he rolled a nine, I rolled a six. Oh, 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 I misread them. Uh, all right, dog. I'm ready if you just want me to go. Yeah, it's your turn. You just stabbed her and then pulled. about four at this point in time, um, has come to accept the fact of the destruction of his world and more than likely everyone and everything he did hold dear in the type of life that he had lived. Um, you know, his, um, his father figure, his actual father, even being the betrayer that he is. Mm -hmm. His, his mother not really having much to do with her, his contacts in the crime world, you know, what could be considered family, and has essentially begun the process of moving on into, despite their differences of opinion between him and Jonas, and obviously the, the history of avoiding Verk's gang, period, because, oh, well, you know, thieves don't mix with gladiators. Mm -hmm. yep. um, he, he's found this new trio uh, of, of dis dysfunction. At least he has something. At least he's had something. And 
he looks at his situation. He sees really shoving a sword through. I don't know if, I don't think he, I don't know if he'd be able to determine whether or not he knew it was a, a soul or just her in general. But seeing that that kind of a wound, the, the, the loss of his surprise, um, the situation that he's in, he, in that split moment, made peace with it that this could be his last moment and you know he he had always taken everything he he had never really been given anything besides the roof the, the the roof over his head of the gang and at this point in time he decided to 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 pay it back for the the triumph of the world of songs he saw a lot of that in Jonas of the boisterous, proud, triumphant, just bloodthirst sense that this that this guy brings about him with Verk, the bloodlust, uh, obviously of of being the barbarian, of being the gladiator, and then seeing in the cathedrals, the serenity that at first he didn't really see in himself Davros because his life was one of up and downs and turmoil. Mm -hmm. But ultimately when push came to shove, his, his work, his dedication, it required a steady hand. It required a steadfastness in knowing what to do and when to do it and sticking to the plan and just finding the calm in the job and utilizing that to get things done. He's with the knowledge of whatever these devices are that cause so much pain and destruction of these people appearing in this white flash, knowing that what last vestiges of family that he has are about to be surrounded the finding him in the situation that he is, there's only one thing for him to do. There's one opponent in front of him. There's nowhere for him to hide. There's nowhere for him to run. He takes that sword, holds it in two hands, and he takes one overarching swing, charges at her, aims right for the neck, called shot, if you will, mm -hmm. and seeing what damage he, what little damage he seems to have caused last time this is just him call it a sacrifice yeah this is this is the finest call hour. It, this is th this is this is the, the 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 apex of what his actions are for whatever remaining time he has left no i think that's fucking beautiful kurt that was that was excellent i think that was uh, an incredible tie-in. I don't. I think that really organically fit. Uh, that's really wonderful. Um, I'm going to grant you the bonuses from all three worlds into this strike. You pull. You you as you described. You physically pull in that connection, that power, that feeling. You tie it back to the people on the outside that you're trying to save. You pull it into this world with you. So, um, as I recall, you have advantage on this hit. You get to add your charisma modifier to the damage. You're going to add um, an extra uh, D6 to the hit, and it splash damages, but there's no one else around. So it actually, uh, I'm going to give you two D6 because their damage has nowhere else to go but to her. And then you get the effect of the serenity of the world of cathedrals, where I am going to. <sighs> there's two ways I could go with this. Give me one second. With the Serenity of Cathedrals, I'm going to remove the penalty for your called shot. You do not have an AC disadvantage. So, add 2d6, add Charisma Modifier, add your Sneak Attack, so that's 4d6 plus Charisma Modifier, plus Dex Modifier, plus your Normal Attack, and you have advantage on the roll. And there's exactly one truth, if this doesn't go your way, by the way. <laughs> Oh, nice. What's that total on that 13? I'm pretty sure you're good. 
is the charisma the charisma is to the attack roll, right? To the damage roll. Oh, to the damage. Okay. Um, that would be an 18. Okay, that's a hit. And you're going to lop off her head. That's the move. That's the movement. That is the movement, and I'm going to maximize the. Okay. Thank you. I now have all the truth in the game. So what do we got? 5d6 plus charisma plus dex. Uh, right? Okay. Does, that, does that count right? Um, I, you gave me 2d6 for oh. the um, the bloodlust, I think. Yep. Right? Uh -huh. And you have 2d6. One, one oh, I'm, I'm getting sneak attack on this? You are. Yes. Okay. Then, yes, then it would be 5d6. Okay. So, uh, 30 plus Christmas plus, plus dex. Plus six. 36 damage, called shot to the neck. You just pull it back. You, you, you had staggered back from your first hit, right? So you had stabbed her. You kind of lurched over the table. You have four hit points. You're bleeding everywhere. You were completely off balance. You go back to the other side of the table and you pull yourself together in this moment. It's as if all the wounds wash away. You, I'm going to say it makes sense to me that you get back on top. You stand on the table, bring the sword down right across. She looks up at you and right before the strike hits, she's not, she's mad a little bit. She's power hungry. She's a little bit broken. But she's not a fool. She sees the hit and she knows there's nothing she can do. Slices right through her head, falls to the ground. And you don't, right, right when you would hear that slap of wet, bloody flesh on the ground, you hear nothing. Uh, Verk. The um, mouth. Uh, uh, looks actually no you see the eyes that were staring at you and the teeth that were clenched they just go dead and the teeth remain clenched on this quick what's quickly becoming a stump of a wrist um and in the oh, did you mortis, say it latched on i thought you just bit no no it's same as the eyeballs it was the same just trying to bite your your arm off she's like clamped down on it um but the the light goes out of her eyes the uh, teeth stay clenched. Uh, Jonas, uh, you look up, and as you're thinking of what to do, you're thinking of 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 uh, Davros, of the limitless power you have here, the seventy three souls, what you can do with it, and um, you see Davros appear right up opposite Harkwell, next to you on the ground, and the tree just goes limp. The arms fall to the side. They. Um, no, he's not grabbing onto you anymore, um, Burke, so you're okay. And the tree just kind of slumps over and all of the greenery starts to turn brown and starts to rot at an accelerated pace. Uh, can I uh, climb down as I notice this? Uh, yes, you can. Hold on, my headset. I should charge this Um, it's like a, it's a swift, it's an easy climb down. Okay. Um, I'll take the. He's out of here. Um, and the blue flame sputters and then is gone. Jonas c comes floating down and is, uh, like kneels in front of where the yeah yes just like that <laughs> uh, comes down and oh kneels God, in front of it's just because that piece is, yeah uh, kneels in front of uh, where Brightholm's body you know, lays lifeless and like fails to grasp at fleeting blue flame. You still have yours. I know. By the way, I want more. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, so, r r real quick with, um, for, uh, for, I mean, is, is that, that's the initiative-based action with Brightholm is over, right? Yeah, co combat's done. Okay. Well, not, ne I mean, not necessarily, right? Well, co combat's done, like, you're, you're, for the moment, out of initiative. Right, right, right. Yes. But we heard the cocking of guns and... And I'm setting them up right now. Yeah, I figured. So, do... do are are we aware of... Yep, you see those those pieces that are those the rooks are the um, knights and the bishop piece there. You see them um, taking cover behind the wall, rifles leveled. The bishop has walked out and he is not in cover. He is in between, right where you see it, in between those two pieces of, of downed wall. And he has his hand held up as if he's ready to fight. Um, and you see him, uh, he is has a, a, a half mask over his face. Um, but his eyes uh, narrow as he stares at you in the situation. He looks up at Brightholm uh, with a little bit of surprise. Like, he knew what he was walking into, but didn't expect to get here at this point. This is something uh, profoundly odd to him. That Brightholm died? Yeah, that she, that, like, it's done. Like, she's, it's dead. Okay. Um, uh, Harkwell sees them doesn't know what this is, but sees you holding the flame, and he is just fully on his knees, hands up towards you, waiting for you to save him. Yep. And take him home. Yep. The little girl is right behind you. Uh, she looks at the men. She recognizes them. Her eyes go wide. She's seen this before, and she starts to run away. She runs and dashes behind, um, or floats and dashes behind um, uh, Davros, who is still at four hit points. Um. <clears throat> Oh, can I stop the tree from moving? That'd be a lovely little love. No, I don't think so. I don't see how you would do that. That's okay. Oh, oh, d <gasps> yes. Dude, now a... it's ha that's Hold amazing. On. There we go. That's pretty amazing. That's yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> um, he starts to lower his hand. He's about to give the kill command. There are four shots coming your way. One of you has four hit points. You have exactly one action. Yep. Jonas, what do you do? Jonas slowly backs up towards the others. Oh, and by the way, hold on. I'm sorry. Because Brightholm is now dead. Uh, Davros, you have the compass, right? I was I was going to ask that, but I didn't know if it was uh, free yeah. action time or not. No, not not for you. I don't know that you have time to do this just yet. Uh, cause you just, you just took your turn. Um, but, uh, you hear the compass say link reestablished and then she's gone. Triangulation complete location in the grave established. Where would you like to go? Hold on for that thought. Jonas. Damn it. I had a really good idea, and now I feel like if we have the out with the compass... Uh, you don't know that. If that makes your decision easier. I, so, so we wouldn't have heard that, right? That, that only speaks to nope. Davros, right? Correct. It makes my Just decision... Just play the character. No, 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 no. You're right, but it makes my decision easier in the, in the worse, you know, in Max way, not the character way. Um. So I slowly back up towards Harkwell and, uh, like, you know, when you walk backwards and you're trying to protect, you know, so like I have my arms like stretched behind me and I'm like gathering, the. Uh, the, you know, all the other characters as I'm getting closer and closer. So I'm trying to, like, carry them behind me. Mm hmm And <clears throat> I, I kind of, with my eyes still forward, turn my head to over my shoulder, tell Harkwell, um, your faith has been tested and it shall be rewarded. 
So we're not we're not giving up the charade anytime soon. I don't I don't no. know I don't know if you caught that vibe from yeah yeah from the last session. Yep. So uh, I would like to use the divine power uh, bestowed upon me to blink the entire set of us to the cathedral that uh, Harkwell understands is his home. Okay. <laughs> There's. This is a very complicated question for reasons that were going to be revealed in about 15 minutes. Um... <laughs> Okay, I know how to do this. <laughs> you don't know what, and so you don't know what Davros is doing. Davros, you have no idea what Jonas, you don't know what he has in his hand, I know what, what it I'm is, doing. what he's doing. What are you doing, Davros? I was going to say cathedrals. Okay, so you lock in cathedrals, and at the same moment that you, and you like give the order to, 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 to jump, right? As you give that, um, uh, Jonas, not even looking at you, just completely self-absorbed, takes it, close you close your hand over it, the flame is gone. You 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 take that power and you release it. And you hear a word resonate in all of you hear a word resonate in your head, and it is the idea of something. It's the 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 essence, the intent of this nameless cathedral. Um Right as you feel that, Davros, you're like, wait, what? And then click, and everything goes white. <clears throat> uh, at true to form, I'm going to take a bunch of shots at you as you port. Uh, I have four shots to take. This yeah, is going to uh, be at Verk. Oh, all right. Yeah, what's up? Nothing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Verk, what's your armor class? 14. Uh, hit. <laughs> hit again. On me? Uh, yes. Uh, not one on, uh, Jonas. Divers, what's your armor class? 14. Okay. You're hit as well. Uh, Herc, take a measly five damage directly to wounds. Jonas, you don't take anything. Is this piercing? It doesn't, none of your damage has any, um, nothing you have stops this. It's a bullet. Okay. It, it, it is, it is bullet damage. Um, and, uh, Davros. Oh, oh thank God. A one. You're down to three <laughs> wounds. It just grazes you right as the port goes off. All right. What's everyone's sorry, wound total you... out, of, out of curiosity? Three. Did you... What was the number you said for me? Five? Five. five. Yeah, yeah, five right to wounds. Okay. Oh, to wounds. Wounds is the smaller number, right? It's the bad one. It's the one you don't want to go down. It's double your con. I don't know uh, if it's smaller for you. I don't know what number is your smaller number. Probably gone. That I was Probably pulling wins. it from the. Uh, damn it. Um, started. It's not important right this second. No, you're fine. Um. Uh. Everything goes uh white, and then everything blinks back. Except there's a problem. You're not at a well. You're not in front of a fair weather anything you seem to be floating in the middle of empty space you look around you there's debris everywhere rocks that upon closer inspection as they drift are craggy mountains entire ranges ripped up from the earth and floating in space the wreckages of cities vast empires worth of gold, steel, concrete, clay, ripped up from their foundations, tossed aside like so much confetti in this place. <laughs> it's nearly drained of color. 
what earth has been pulled up has had its grass long dead, its trees long petrified. There are rivers of dark blood floating all around like currents in this, this empty space. Torrents of them, waterfalls of them. More blood than any nation could have in the blood of all of its people. And beyond all this, far, far in the distance, you see the wreckages of vast forms. Bodies. Hey, Seas. Thanks for the follow, man. Appreciate the bodies it. of gods. The compass says, welcome to the grave. And I know it is 1043, but I think we will end our session We shall call it so, so close, so, so close. close, so close. We shall call Saint it Frets time. your grave. St. Frets channel. Would you say Jonas or Frets? We shall call it your grave. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone who tuned in. I, I don't really I'm too busy uh, looking yeah, at other stuff yeah. to read the chat, so I didn't really see who was saying what, except for one or two things. But thank you, everybody who, who's tuned in, of course. Hey, we, we had uh, uh, two we had two followers, Agni, uh, who is a fellow D&D player and streamer. So feel free to check out uh, cool. Agni's uh, Agni's yeah. uh, uh, channel if you guys get a chance. I'll I believe, to follow. Yeah, I believe he said uh, Saturday they're going to be starting up a campaign, so he's super excited. Cool. Um, oh. and, uh, Agni, uh, I highly recommend uh, Tabletop Simulator. Uh, there's a lot you can do with it. <laughs> takes a lot of, uh, takes a couple hours of work it's, to get it where you want it, and I'm happy to share with you what my setup, if you'd like. It's neat. It's it's very neat. I I think uh, Dan, we talked about uh, because this campaign is coming to a, a close. Hopefully, probably in the next session. Um, uh, Agni says he uses Roll20, uh, but I think we're going to a different stream setup, so we'll have more webcam, yeah. more uh, more focus on the stories and the, the narrative that we're trying to weave together, and less focus yeah. maybe on the uh, the 3D stuff that we really can't, uh, you know, make perfect. Yeah. Um, we're probably going to switch to Fate, but... Uh, and then we also had uh, uh, TTV uh, C's uh, check us out and follow us today, so appreciate it, guys. Cool. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, uh, yeah, next week, same fresh time. Oh, oh, hold on, Kurt. Yes, are we good for Thursday yeah, still? Thursday okay. is good. So, all same right. fresh time, same fresh channel. So, likely, if you guys have been following at all or know anything about the campaign so far, uh, the grave or uh, you know the, the the naming convention sounds pretty ominous. So, uh, sounds like uh, probably episode six here will be uh, be the end of this little mini uh, mini adventure we, we're, we're having. It will. Uh, Ted knows what the grave is. He'll maybe I'll maybe I'll bring Ted in next week. He'll, he'll explain the grave, uh, <laughs> the 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 ruins of these gods. Uh, cool. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks, guys. I'll catch you all next week. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Uh, thank yeah. you, guys. Um, we'll be uh, we'll be playing, guys, uh, next Thursday again, eight p.m. EST. <coughs> Excuse me. Hopefully, I'll be over this congestion. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Nova Intrepid threw us a thousand and one biddies. Um, we had a, a couple new followers and stuff. Really appreciate the views. Um, thank you so much. Uh, please uh, follow and like each other's stuff. Um, <coughs> and, uh, you know, come in and interact and, and let us know what you think of the campaigns and stuff. Because we're here to, you know, we're throwing this together because we want to get these cool stories that are built off of tabletop games out. <coughs> excuse me out into the world for people to enjoy or people to check out or whatever you know we, we think uh you know uh, uh the, the the lot of us can weave together cool narratives and cool storylines and cool characters to uh to really interact with uh through this medium so um i think it's uh it's a it's a pretty cool thing um it beats doing a podcast <clears throat> or an audio based uh you know uh uh media uh so it's pretty neat so Thank you uh, very much, guys. Appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we will see you uh, next Thursday. Uh, in the meantime, sometimes I uh, play uh, some various games. I'm uh, trying to do a Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild playthrough. Uh, so you might, get, you know, if you throw me the follow, you might see me go live. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter if you want some notifications. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> if you want some notifications that way. Um, and then otherwise, uh, 
I hope everybody uh, has a wonderful night and a good weekend coming up, right? Thank you so much, guys. Have a good night.